In this video, we're going to focus on adding behavior to agents in our crowd simulation. We'll start off with a simple one, avoidance. Avoidance is super useful for preventing the agents from overlapping each other, giving it a bit more realism. Unfortunately, there really isn't any simple way of doing actual collision detection like how you would expect an RBD simulation to work. The crowds in Houdini is based off particles underneath all the internal workings and reuses a lot of the same pop net concepts that can be applied to the crowd solver. You'll find the particle nodes are compatible with the crowd solver. To simulate avoidance, forces are being applied to each agent that directs them away from each other, creating an avoidance effect. This is the same way PopNet does avoidance. If two agents get close enough to each other, a very powerful force is applied to each of them, directing them away from each other. Basic concept number three, crowd avoidance. We're just going to jump back to concept number one for one minute, and I'm going to explain an important concept of avoidance in crowds. Now, if you recall, we don't have that character added in yet, but we still had that explosion effect happening. Let's go into the .NET. And in the crowd solver, there's an avoidance tab up here. Let's get into that. Click that. And you're brought it up with all these parameters that you can adjust. So let me play the animation one more time. And you can see that all these, um, all of our agents explodes or sort of walks away. They're really, they're just walking away. They're doing it in such a high speed. So once they get close enough, right about here, you see that explosion. That's when the avoidance kicks in because that's where most of the agents get really, really close to each other. And that's what avoidance does. It tries to look for agents that are clustering together at a certain distance where this neighbor distance kicks in. If we're a neighboring agent, the avoidance will start to kick in. When the avoidance kicks in, a force facing the opposite direction tells them to move away from each other. This doesn't guarantee that the agent won't overlap. It's not like an RBD sim when there's a definite collision detection. In crowds, the agents are gently guided away from each other. If the agents have nowhere to go, you're gonna see them overlap. This is very similar to how you apply forces to particles, the force particle. Jumping back into the current setup from concept number two, we have our character mesh added in, which partly fixed the exaggerated explosion effect, which really was just agents walking away. This is what we had before, exploding agents, where the avoidance kicks in. Now let's go back into the simulation. Let's play it again. It's no longer exploding away because we actually have a character mesh, a character rig attached to this, and we have a crowd state. The avoidance force was overriding everything. Here it goes like, okay, avoidance kicks in. I gently adjust your crowd state. Now let's take a look at these. Let me turn the background to a darker background and then remove the, the, the lines, the grid lines, so we can see this more clearly. The weight in this case is not very useful since we only have one state and only one force acting on it. There's only the avoidance. But later on, when you have more complex crowd simulation set up, you have multiple forces acting on it and that's where the weight will come in handy. You could have a crowd of bug agents set up with an attraction force that pulls them towards a cookie on the ground. And you'll probably have an avoidance force as well to keep the bugs from overlapping each other in the simulation. The weight parameter will be a way for you to adjust how hard should Houdini to try to keep the bugs apart while keeping the bugs attracted to the cookie at the same time. If you wanted the bugs to be attracted to the cookie and you don't really care how much avoidance takes place, who knows? You might have a camera that's really far away shooting on a hundred bugs so the viewer can't really tell if they're overlapping each other anyways and you want to put more weight onto the attraction force in that case you would lower the weight parameter in the avoidance and that's where the weight comes in for this example it's not very useful i don't think it's affecting it much oh except for the zero weight i think the zero so you can see more overlapping they're just walking overlapping each other now you can see that so if i put this turn this up and they try to avoid each other at least a lot of them are not overlapping anymore so let's change this back to one as for the particle scale this is sort of saying how large each agent is 
if you have a lower p skill it'll let you cluster more agents together more closely if you have a higher p scale it will let them be distributed in a more spacious environment four scale is sort of like how we saw in previously in that explosion well that was an explosion of the force scale of the avoidance when it kicked in this force will determine how fast they turn away so let's pump this up to 100 and yeah, let's go back up here to the crowd source and i want to try to change the way how these agents are spread out there is a relax parameter here the relax parameter does give us some control in how we want the agents to be distributed so i want them to start off clustered so this looks like they're in groups now these people look like they're talking to each other later on i'll show you how you can have more control distribution of the crowd source that's what this second parameter over here we can actually put our own scattered points needed into this second input of the crowd source in order to have more control later on i'll show you that let's go back to the crowd simulation this should do it and let's play it i don't know if you can see that go top so this is what we get for a large avoidance um force with low anticipation time they have drastically this guy walks over here walks where is he i lost him walks over here and walks walk here and walks back because he sees someone else and he goes zigzags so let's do anticipation back to 10 boost to 10. this way they can see ahead of time a lot further down the road so we're gonna avoid people more anticipation so this is way more smoother you don't have agents zigzagging the anticipation look to the future a little bit more what houdini is trying to do is reproject the current direction and velocity of where this current agent will be in in the future and it goes like okay will there be agents in my way at that time in the future that's what they're projecting the location according to the speed and acceleration that they have currently i'm not sure if they take in into account acceleration i think it's just speed so let me put this anticipation down to two because usually that's more realistic you don't avoid people half a block down the street you usually avoid people when you're walking down the street you avoid people when you get to like a meter or you get close so that's why i like to keep the anticipation a little low if i turn up the particle scale you might see a huge yeah because each the particle scale defines how close they can be within each other and since we start off in these little small clusters the particle scale really takes into into effect and it goes like okay we're, we start off way too close we gotta like spread out now if i turn the force back now let's see what happens they spread out more gently because you can see uh you can see over here that they're spread out quite dis um evenly let's see it might just be me i have a few of these guys going in circles because they're go they're going back here and they see someone they go back see someone and go back so they're going in circles so we have this which is still evenly uh distributed but we have more agents in the middle 1.5 is one more time yeah there's less agents hanging around in the middle so we have less agents going back and forth going in circles the, these agents are no longer going back and forth they're just doing their own thing so the avoidance is more gentle as opposed to when it was 200 they would they would see someone and they would go back right away they would see another person and go back right away so we would have more agents hanging around it'll portion of this uh the so-called circle that they formed the particle scale really helped illustrate this just because they're now occupying more space each agent is now required to occupy more space and it's my guess is that the p scale is multiplied to the four scale because it makes sense and underneath the hood i think houdini is multiplying these two just because uh the closer but inversely multiplying it um the closer the agents are the more powerful the avoidance kicks in the further they are well that you don't any avoidance at all because they're f they have quite a bit of distance so the force of the avoidance should have a fall off thanks for watching and sticking to the end